guys, it's been a while since you've seen this car. It's been kind of hanging out with some other broken stuff for a little while, and today we're going to dig into it and see what happened. Now I should say what I'm hoping to find is that we don't need to tear this thing apart, but we're going to show you how and why we're going to do that. So what we're going to do is we are going to pull out all of the plugs, do a compression check, stick the bore scope down into the bore if we see heavy scoring on the cylinders or broken pistons then we know it was the ring gap. If we don't we can safely assume that it is a spark plug gap issue which is causing the air and fuel mixture to not light off which makes a low pressure condition inside of the combustion chamber which makes it so that the piston rings have a harder time sealing because they rely on combustion in order to maintain a good seal which allows the crankcase pressure to make its way into the combustion chamber and with it oil which contaminates the spark plug and makes this situation even worse. We've actually had this happen on another engine where one of the spark plugs got oil on it we inspected everything like we're going to do today, we put a new spark plug in it, and the problem went away. So let's get to work and see if there's a problem. Good to go. So the next thing that we did was we stuck the bore scope down into every cylinder. All of the cylinders look pretty good with the exception of cylinder number four. This cylinder looked pretty bad. Lots of oil buildup, but the piston wasn't broken. We then inspected the sides of the bore and there was some pretty decent scoring. We might have possibly broken a ring, but the car still has compression and it doesn't smoke going down the road, so it's probably fine. At the end of the day, it's a engine that I paid $100 for that's been abused for two years, so it's not like I'm really risking much. The block is probably already ruined. These engines don't have much room for overbore. So if I plan to run the car with less cylinder pressure than what we were making on the dyno, it should last a little while. So I took it for a drive.
as you saw in the drive, I got the thing under boost quite a few times, and we then inspected cylinder number four again. You can see that it has significantly cleaned up. A lot of the oil that was in the cylinder had burned out. What this says to me is if I keep the boost low, it should be fine. All right, guys, so after our test results for today, basically what I've decided is we're just going to keep running it the way that it is. This is definitely the OG car for this channel. This is sort of what got us off the ground. You're always going to see this car being circulated through the content. It's always going to be probably changing, upgrading, whatnot. But as for right now, my goal is to get ready for drag week next year. I want to take the Fairmont wagon, but I want this car on standby as a backup for the case in which maybe the Fairmont were to break an engine a day before drag week or something stupid like that. This car is more than capable as a street car. In fact, it cruises a little better than the Fairmont does. So I think it will be a suitable alternative. We will be forced into Street Machine Eliminator, which is perfectly fine with me. We might take it out a few times next year to try and dial in a 10.00 ET. But for now, it's gonna stay about the same. That being said, one thing that I would like to upgrade on this are the camshafts. Now some of you may be saying, you have a compromised engine, why would you put camshafts in it? The reason for that is, as I have discussed in other videos, torque is cylinder pressure. However, horsepower determines how quickly the car is able to cover the quarter mile. So, what I want to do is reduce cylinder pressure, but make the same amount of horsepower. So what we're going to do is install the camshafts, spin it harder, keep the cylinder pressure the same or lower, and make the same amount of power. At least that's the theory anyways. Also, who doesn't want a 7500 RPM six cylinder in their Studebaker? Hopefully next week's video will be the process of installing those cams on this car. I might not quite be ready to unveil that whole process as I would like to start selling camshaft install kits for these engines. Basically, the kits will include the shims and the lash adjuster upgrades that you need to install Schneider reground cams on your Vortec 4200. Stay tuned for that. It might be two weeks, we'll see. But for now, that's all we have today. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.